Okay, I, I will um, present you the internals uh, of uh, PubSub in Jamodi and how to play with that in order to uh, customize the way PubSub is working to match your need. So uh, PubSub is uh, XEP60 in version uh, 130, uh, one, uh, yes, uh, for, for um, four or five years now, the version did, did not change. So uh, the specification is, uh, I would say, closed, stable, and it doesn't change anymore. Uh, I think it's uh, since 2007 or 2008, something like that. No change for uh, seven years. So now it's quite stable, but it's a huge specification, very big, about uh, 100 pages, and a lot, a lot of use cases. So uh, we'll see why PubSub is maybe not using us because of the complexity, maybe, and we'll see uh, also uh, how to, to make it simpler to match everyday needs. You have 12 main use cases. Uh, we'll see the cases uh, in details and how we implement that in each body. But mostly what you want to do is uh, subscribe and subscribe. That is, you want to get notification for a given topic. You want to configure subscription. You have the possibility to, uh, uh, to expire your subscription, for example. A lot of, of uh, configuration items are available for your subscription to the topics. You want to get the items, the items that were published before. Uh, you want to publish items. And you want, for, you want to delete some items because the PubSub is able to store the items for a given period of time. Of course, you want to create and delete nodes and uh, purge nodes, that is, remove all items from the node. And as a node owner, you want to manage subscription and affiliations. So just to match in terms of vocabulary, when we talk about room in, in group chat, in PubSub, we'll talk about nodes. Um, node is a... Um, a central place when owners and publishers send items. The items can be everything you want, just a message or an atom or anything uh, that can be uh, presented in XMPP. Uh, and you have subscribers. Subscribers receive the item. As a publisher, when I send an item to a node, I don't get it back. As a subscriber, when a publisher publishes an item on a node, I receive it. But as a subscriber, I can't publish item myself in a normal situation. And we'll see that uh, we have a lot of possible configuration of a given room, of a given node, I would say, in, in PubSub, uh, to allow uh, more people to publish or forbid some people to publish. <clears throat> In addition to the uh, XIP, we have the, the PEP XEP version 11. Michael told, uh, told you about it's a very simple PEP sub system. In fact, you don't have to create nodes, you just publish items uh, which are personal items and people from your roster receive the items. Michael covered this topic already. And you have the collection node uh, specification, which is, uh, I, I said duplicated, but in fact, it's not really used because it's, it's even more complex in terms of uh, uh, adding uh, uh, um, capabilities to define a hierarchy of nodes. When you have node child nodes, and uh, only terminal nodes can store items. It's, it's quite limited in terms of use. It's, it's very powerful, but it's uh, really close to, to uh, uh, a very precise use case. And it's very not common, in fact. 
So first implementation uh, is from uh, Hanexai, uh, the author of Vija and uh, I don't remember when was the first uh, code of WebSub, uh, I guess maybe 2003 or four. And um, after that, few years after, I, I um, worked on, on the module to make it uh, more powerful in terms of customization and optimization. Because as XEP is very huge, the module is very complex. So it's very hard to tune it in order to, uh, to match your need and to have it working in an efficient way. So we needed to break this implementation in, uh, in, uh, in a manner uh, uh, using plugins and, uh, and a PubSub engine, which is generic enough just to do the very minimal stuff here and delegate uh, all the internal things to the plugins. And uh, uh, we started in 2007 uh, to work on this API. It took several months because it, it's very not easy. We had to find the good balance if we spread the module too much. Uh, the complexity of making all the things working together uh, may break the benefits of working on the API and uh, uh, a too simplistic API uh, would make the plugin not powerful enough. So it took a few months in order to, to find the good balance of how far we want to go and uh, how much we can improve the performances to match very unique cases because PubSub is so generic. You can imagine doing everything with PubSub, but some will have very few nodes with a lot of subscribers on every node. Some will have millions of nodes, but few uh, uh, subscribers per node. And this is really not the same use case from a server point of view. Even if it's the same specifications, the same zip, and the same way of functioning uh, from XMPP uh, point of view. And uh, recently we had some improvements uh, in, uh, in the way we manage your, our plugin and the way we manage uh, the broadcasting of events in PubSub. So uh, the server side implementation is quite simple. It's uh, standard PubSub um, uh, engine, which work as an EJBody module. For that, we have an IQ handler, and uh, the EJBody router allows us to have several handlers running in parallel. Each handler um, is able to cope with the user query, broadcast the, the query, um, not broadcast, uh, make use of the plugins to handle the query correctly, sends the message that has to be broadcasted to a sending loop and respond to the user the correct result of the query. So the, the, the core module just handle the core routing of a pub sub, that is just checking the user have the right to do this and um, very minimal tests on every use case and everything else is delegated to plugins. And the plugins will take care of storing PubSub nodes, checking the rights and the configuration of nodes. Other plugins will take care of the subscription, manage subscription, check the subscription option, etc. So the PubSub engine don't really have a view of that, it just delegates to the plugins. And that's what we, we will see here is how to write your plugins, how to uh, uh, use the existing plugins and extend them just to fit your need and uh, remove all the useless stuff for your use case. So we have two kinds of plugins in PubSub. We have what we call the not tree plugins because uh, at the beginning when we wrote the API, we wanted to uh, be able to structure the node in a tree the same way as your store file on the file system. 
So uh, uh, this notary plugin was in charge of managing this uh, the path of each node, and uh, as it was not, it, it never been the, the the part of the activity. In fact, we <coughs> we had it as an external plugin in first place, and then it become also our uh, our main plugin to manage nodes. So uh, this one uh, is just about to create, remove, and get nodes. Why do we need a specific plugin for that? Because if we want uh, to store a node in a given way, for example here, uh, like handling a pass on the file system, we have to define some link between nodes. By default, all nodes are, are on, the, on the flat namespace, so we don't handle uh, links between nodes. But uh, depending on your implementation, you may want a user to, to create only child nodes and not, uh, not everywhere on, on, on your namespace. That all depends on your implementation. So this plugin is really tied to this, uh, to this use. As it also uh, handles the uh, creation of the nodes, it copes with the configuration of the nodes. And that's why we, uh, we need first storage here, is about to store the configuration of each node. Looking at the ZFCST, you see each node has a lot of configuration items. For example, you can limit the number of items you want to store in this node. You can limit number of subscribers if you want. All that has to be stored somewhere. And the node tree nodes plugin is about to handle that. It's all about this. So the tree, not tree plugin, is a default one. And uh, this one handles several uh, backends. For example, uh, just ODBC and Nisia right now. But if you have uh, a React database, for example, you can write your own plugin to standard in on React. And, um, this plugin allows us to store the nodes in a hierarchy as uh, in a file system. So uh, it's an option. You have to use it or not. It's up to you. And uh, if you want to do that, you just have nodes uh, uh, presented in the slash home, slash user, slash blah, 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 whatever you want. So you can structure a bit the tree of your nodes. But it's, it's uh, not mandatory. We also added a virtual node tree plugin, which uh, was never documented, but <laughs> we talk about it here today because uh, it's very important plugin if you want to optimize things, and you will understand why. And virtual you mean uh, there is no, uh, uh, no, no storage, only nothing. Only yeah, only memory and. Uh, uh, mm, absolutely no runtime information on a given node. All nodes are the same. And there is also a DAG plugin, which was a contribution from Brian Cooley uh, to handle this uh, example of collection node. And it's a kind of specification on, uh, on our notary plugin, but uh, we never really supported this plugin. So uh, I won't cover this plugin <coughs> today, just to mention it exists. And just to mention, you can uh, also extend the PubSub with your own node tree plugin. And we have the node plugin. Uh, I was not very uh, uh, inventive when <laughs> checking a kind of, uh, of, uh, of name for the plugins. But anyway, the, the node plugin is, is a generic plugin for uh, everything else. So uh, once a PubSub engine uh, have cup with node creation, removal, and stuff like that with a node tree plugin. It delegates other actions to the node plugin. And the node plugin um, is not mandatory, only one handling your entire uh, PubSub system. On a PubSub uh, engine, you can have two, three, four node plugins, and you can 
define the type of plugin you want to use at node creation time. So this is not documented XM60. We did something we added for convenience in, a, in our server. By default, we always, we always use the same plugin, but uh, for example, we handle pep with the pep sub engine. We didn't write uh, a, a dedicated pep plugin for, uh, for each body. So pep is just a plugin of the pep sub engine, but it's not the default plugin. By default, when I want to create a node, I just create a pep sub node. So having the, the capability to add extra plugins inside the main PubSub engine allows us to cover several different use cases with the same code base. So you say you have a node tree plugin which is in charge of the switching and node creation and deletion, mm -hmm. and you have a node plugin which is in charge of the node functions. Yes. The management of the node exactly. while it's being uh, living on the system, while it's when it receives items, when it has to broadcast items. And what, what are you doing the core? The core, the core, the core yeah. will see that just after is co co coordinating calls between the plugins and uh, make sure everything was correctly together. And of course, the PubSub engine is also delegating uh, mm -hmm. the broadcast of the message and the response to uh, the user asking things to the engine. So uh, we also have a lot of plugins which are derivated from the default one. For example, I, I listed here uh, public and private. It's uh, just a copy of the default flat plugin, but with a different node configuration. Each plugin comes with its own default node configuration. By default, when you create a node, you have the possibility to change the configuration. And uh, by using a custom plugin, we just make this configuration um, transparent for the user. When you create a node, it already has the correct configuration. For example, the public plugin would be exactly the same as flat plugin, but allowing anyone to publish on the node. In each body uh, community, we have two backends, of course, uh, Misia and uh, ODBC. In each uh, business edition, we also have other uh, backends, so we, we, we can extend the possibility to, uh, to store the data and spread the data across the, the cluster. It all depends on the plugins. And that's also why the uh, specification of this API was quite complex because we wanted to be able to change the backend without having to change the PubSub engine. So the engine is completely unaware of the way we store items and subscription and things like that. So I already covered this, uh, this slide. Uh, PubSub Engine really does minimal checking on, uh, on the use case and delegates everything else to the plugins. So uh, let's go deeper in, uh, in the action and interaction of the engine and the different plugins. And you will see here why uh, PubSub is doing this right now, what it's not necessarily very common uh, for several kinds of usage and uh, why you will need to tune the PubSub for your use. <coughs> First, when you want to create a node, the PubSub engine uh, asks for the node plugin to uh, change the node name to something uh, usable internally because we wanted the ability to have a tree of nodes to uh, add a hierarchy between uh, the nodes so we have to transform a node name to a path and uh, as we have 
one to three plugins allowing uh, storing node in pass, we must do this check every time. So internally, the node name is just a list, a list of one, it one items by default, but can be several items, and the list is uh, the hierarchy of the node in the tree. And then the pipsub engine have to check the permission. And for that, it still asks the node plugin, can this guy create this node? Of course, at any time, if there is an issue, the pipsub engine stops the action and re uh, respond the corresponding error to the user. There are many kinds of errors possible. It's uh, very complex to test, by the way. And uh, uh, I just uh, here describe the normal case when there are no error and we just re respond OK to the user. So the guy can create the node. We ask the node tree plugin to effectively create the node. It writes the node in its own backend. By the way, the backend to store the node can be completely different backend. Uh, to store the affiliation and subscription, just a matter of choice. When the node is created, at this time, the PubSub engine uh, have always the, ab the ability to retrieve the node information. That means the entire context and the configurations on the node. This configuration is very important because The configuration of the node includes its feature. So later we'll see some use cases. The user may ask for something, but depending on the node feature which has been configured, the user uh, may be allowed or not to perform the action. So this is really important here. When the node is created, only at this time, the pub sub engine can ask the node plugin to write the affiliation. Hey, this guy is the owner of the node. Uh, there is uh, the possibility to broadcast the event of a node being created on the system. Uh, it's not reused uh, in, uh, in, common, uh, in common use cases. And at last, the PubSub engine can respond, OK, the node is created. Uh, so already here, you see uh, the interaction is very uh, step by step. I mean, you, we cannot uh, spread task uh, over the cluster, or uh, we cannot uh, also parallelize a lot of things. Due to the way uh, PubSub is defined, we have to perform one action at a time, and if we can continue, perform the next step. The node deletion is, is quite the same. First, we want to, to, uh, to get an action on the node. So we need to retrieve the node from the backend. We ask the PubSub engine, ask the node tree plugin for the node. Of course, at this moment, uh, the node tree plugin can say, oh, this node is unknown. You cannot continue. And here, again, the PubSub engine knows what to reply to the client. When we get the node, we have still to ask the node plugin for the affiliation. Does this guy have the right to delete the node if it's the owner of the node, for example? If the node configuration allows anyone to delete the node, then it's OK. But if the node configuration uh, really needs the, uh, the guy asking for the deletion to be the owner, then I have to make sure of that. So uh, again, this is the role of the node plugin. Yeah, you, you can still see the distinction between the node tree and the node. When the pip sub engine and everything, it check uh, all is okay and we can continue to perform the action. We first delete the node. So again, we ask the node tree plugin to remove the entry. And when it's done, we ask the node plugin to effectively delete everything related to that node. That can be all items that has been stored, all the affiliation, all the subscription, all the subscription configuration. 
depending on, on your plugin. Again, we have the possibility to broadcast an event to say, hey, this node disappeared and uh, send a result to the, to the user. The subscription now is, uh, you will see it's quite consuming and you will, you will see why. And uh, we'll talk about the way of improvement for that. So first, when uh, as a user you want to subscribe a node, the PubSub engine have to get the node from the tree and get the configuration to know if, it's, uh, if, it, if the node is open. For example, can I subscribe? The node can be configured to be whitelisted so if I'm not in the whitelist, I just cannot subscribe. We have a lot of, uh, of uh, different case to check. If my query is allowed, then we ask the node plugin to write my subscription. And when it's done, we still have to ask the node plugin for the last published items. The node in general, is configured so that is when I subscribed, I usually receive the last published item from that node. This is a common configuration. Of course, we can have uh, our own plugin, which say we never send anything like that. When we subscribe, we are waiting for the next published item. So by default, the PubSub engine reply to uh, the user the subscription result and the last published item. So unsubscribed is, uh, f follows the same way. Again, we check the node and uh, we remove our subscription, being sure that we have been subscribed before. And the published use case. Uh, again, I, I not listed everything. Yeah, it's just the big picture. Uh, when you publish again, 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 we need to get the node configuration. Here you see on every use case, we first need to query uh, the node trip again. Again, are we allowed to publish something? When you can continue, the publish uh, is mostly based on the node plugin. This is the biggest part of the PubSub, uh, of the PubSub use case. <coughs> so first we have to check the models. Depending on the, on the model is if uh, the, uh, the node is open, closed, uh, members only, publishers only, etc. I may be able to publish, for example, um, if the node is configured uh, to be publisher only, as an owner, I cannot publish myself. I have to be, uh, I have to have an affiliation stating I am effectively a publisher to be able to send an item to that node. We have a lot of cases like that. When it's okay, we just write the item, but that's not enough. Uh, in PubSub, we store the hand last published items on the node. So each time we publish an item, we have to remove an old one. And uh, this tends to, uh, to generate two kinds of notification. Because when I send the item, usually this item is broadcasted to subscribers, but the node may also be configured to broadcast the item removal from the whole item to the subscriber. So as a subscriber, you may receive the notification of the new item and also the notification from the removed item. So when the node plugin has done the job, the PubSub engine gets back to uh, the operation, gets the subscription and broadcasts the relevant event to that depending on the configuration. Yes, yes, yes. The broadcast. Uh, you, you see, all, all these kind of this line uh, are just messages. 
So it's delegated to the Thunder process. And uh, at this time, PubSub Engine consider it's OK. Mm. So uh, the Node plugin does nothing about the broadcast and sending message. It's not routing anything. It just returns to uh, the PubSub Engine about what can be done after. Do we have some items to remove? Uh, did we publish the item correctly? Do we have a new role on the publication? And that's the pub sub engine that will route the corresponding message and decide what to trigger depending on the result of the, of the node plugin. Like you send the, the list of subscribers to pub sub? Yes. With, with subscriptions. Pub sub ask for the subscription. What, uh, what is the subscription? Is that Java ID? Yes, it's a list of jigs. Yes. yes. No, no, no. The pub sub engine has the item. And it just asks the node plugin for the list of subscribers. So it's able to, uh, to call the router by itself. So again, it's the pub sub engine, engine that decides what to do depending on the result of the node plugin. That's why you can really trigger what is being done from the PubSub engine from your node plugin. And writing your node plugin allows you to uh, remove useless use cases, for example, remove useless tests, and uh, to really uh, tune your system to whatever you need. Again, when we want to delete an item, we always uh, query the not re plugin we check everything is okay and uh, we have to call the node plugin two times first to effectively delete the item and also to get the, the subscription uh, it's uh, in another good order uh, so when we get the subscription we are able to broadcast the subscribers that the node has been removed, and so the, lots, the, uh, the item has been removed, so uh, they can uh, forget about the item ID. Again, uh, again this, is, uh, this all depends on the node configuration. By default, we don't send events when, a item, when an item is removed from uh, the server, but it's up to you at node creation or after that by changing the node configuration to say, hey, I want to be notified when an item is removed. And the purge node is, is uh, quite the same, but we just remove all items in, uh, in one shot. And uh, last uh, use case we see here, uh, the get items. Get item is is uh, really similar to other use cases we, we we will not talk about, but they follow the exact same steps for retrieve affiliation, retrieve subscription, retrieve items. It all works the same way uh, from the PubSub uh, engine perspective. So uh, again, we ask the not trip again for the not configuration and check uh, this is an allowed use case and we can do that. Uh, then we ask for the node plugin to read the subscription, check we are allowed to get an item, and uh, read the item, return the item to PubSub Engine. It's a method. So, yes, yes, it's a policy method. Uh, you may, be, uh, as a subscriber, you may be able to retrieve the event, but, but may be forbidden to read the items after. Again, that all events of the implementation, it's uh, something you can also have uh, in your own plugin. So, uh, just, do you have questions about that? Do you see the clear distinction between the node tree and the node? Uh, so, let's continue. Uh, our default plugin is not flat, so that's a typical case when you use PubSub, we, we just want to create node, uh, blah, 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 and uh, send items to that node. And we try to, uh, uh, to find good values from a uh, whole feed of possible things in PubSub. That is, by default, of course, we deliver payloads when an item is published. 
if we had set this value to false, that would be each time as a publisher I publish an item, the subscriber only knows an item has been published but does not receive the body of the item. So that uh, in most use cases that's not useful. Uh, we don't not send notification when the configuration of the node is changing. We don't send notification uh, when the node is removed. But uh, we send the notification when an item is removed. That's a choice. It's uh, just a matter of, uh, of personal taste, I would say. Um, What's important, we, of course, we store items. We have persistent items on, uh, on our default implementation and we allow to store 10 items per node. Uh, by default, the access model is open. That is, uh, everyone is allowed to subscribe to the node. Mm -mm -mm. The publish model is publishers. And we limit the max payload to uh, 60K. No, no, uh, 60 kilobyte. Oh, okay, so uh, 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 important point, uh, since the last published item also is when you subscribe and when you get online. That is, as a subscriber, receive I receive the last published item when I connect to the system. That's the default behavior we, we choose to have uh, without changing any settings on, uh, on each other. This one can raise uh, some problems, for example, on very big systems when uh, you have a power voltage on uh, one node, one uh, each body node, and when you, it comes back, you have a lot of users connecting at the same time, and you have to send the last published item to a lot of users. So again, it's a matter of choice. It all depends on uh, your load and uh, your expected usage. And the Nodome tree, it was our first default plugin. Uh, I talked about that. It's uh, just storing the, the node in a tree like in the file system. So by default, we choose home user or home domain user. And as a user, I can create any node in my home. And uh, we choose uh, to be able to store either items either subnodes on each given node. That's not the, the choice of the DAG implementation, for example. A DAG is just all about items or all about subnodes. And we found it's a bit limiting, so uh, uh, we, we want it to be uh, 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 more tolerant to the way we use the nodes. Is it true that uh, when you subscribe to a node, No. no, 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 no. It's not true in this case. It's not true in this case. Uh, it's just a matter of implementation. But uh, we choose to uh, to keep the subscription only, only on the node level, not on the on the sub nodes. And of course, not pep. So it's a very small plugin that just uses the flat plugin uh, and only change the publication items use case. Uh, it's to, uh, to cope with personal eventing uh, protocol. And uh, as it's just instant notification, of course, we don't have persistent items. We don't allow to store items. And uh, we keep an in-memory cache in order to, uh, to be able to send the last published item anywhere. There is no big magic uh, on that. We can, uh, I can comment the code uh, for, for those who are interested in that. And the note DAG, uh, written by uh, Brian Cully. Uh, so we, we at Processor never really used this plugin. Because uh, uh, first, I personally didn't have time to really test it uh, when it was injected in Jabberdy. It was uh, maybe six years ago. Uh, and also, we never had the real need 
uh, for this particular case and uh, we never get also uh, an explicit demand to support it so uh, I, 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 I won't talk more about that uh, today And about the backends, so uh, I said we have a DBC amnesia, but it's just a matter of uh, implementation. The plugins are not very big. Writing a, a typical node plugin is uh, about uh, 200 lines of code, no more. So uh, it can be done very quickly if you need a dedicated backend for, for your storage. Of course, when you write a plugin, you can derive it from the, uh, the supported one. So uh, if we take the example of the PEP, uh, PEP is just mocking uh, the flat plugin, except for the publish item, and we, we implement the way uh, item are published. In the Javadi Business Edition, we also have uh, MDB backend and uh, ETS backend for faster operation and uh, also to, to uh, uh, take advantages of the cluster. When you add a backend, of course, you don't have to change anything on the PubSub engine. It's all about the plugin. Um, yeah, just for convention, we uh, we stored the PubSub record in a table PubSub node. Uh, this is historic name from the time when we stored everything on Nesia, but we kept the same node. Uh, the same uh, table name uh, in, uh, in the ODBC uh, schema. The node plugin uh, manage subscription and affiliation in one shot in what we called uh, PubSub state. So that's the name of the record uh, in, the, in the plugin as well. Uh, it's ju it just a matter of choice. You can choose to spread that uh, and divide by affiliation and subscription in some way. Uh, it's more historical than a, a real need to have them grouped uh, together. And the items are, are stored in a PubSub item. Again, it's a record because uh, we don't just have the body, we also have some metadata from the item. Each item has a creation data, a pub, a modification data, etc. And also that very important part I want to, uh, to call on uh, uh, the virtual node tree. Usually, typical use case uh, cover one need, and uh, with your one need, you won't have to change the configuration on the node. You want uh, to store, let's say, 10 items, and you want that to change. You want the node to be open, and you want that to change over time. So. Storing the same configuration for every node is completely useless. And how, as you see, every use case store, um, I mean, uh, needs the node tree plugin to be called to retrieve the item. So a lot of I.O. can be avoided by using the virtual node tree. Virtual node tree just assume a default configuration and assume a node already exists. So given that, a lot of tests can be made from the PubSub engine in a very efficient way. That is, every time the PubSub engine will ask the notary plugin to get the node, the virtual notary just, we just return always the same record. So it's very efficient and it, it uh, improves dramatically the performances of the engine. When you've done that, you've uh, removed all, 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 almost Yes, 40% of the I.O. calls needed on, on, a, on a pub sub. And you can still customize uh, a bit based on node flat. The plugin is not um, very um, convenient to use. You have to implement all this function. But uh, if, you, uh, if you look quickly at, uh, at them, you can see that most of them can just call the equivalent function in node flat. You only need to change one, two, or three function in order to, uh, to match what you need. So uh, what can be improved if you write your, your own plugin? 
is to remove all useless tests. You can uh, avoid uh, doing some read and write operation. You can just write once uh, if you can uh, avoid tests. Uh, more likely, if you are using an ODBC backend, you won't need to follow uh, the complete uh, workflow to read, uh, for example, the affiliation, check the flag is OK, and uh, then write the affiliation after modifying it. You can just uh, write and uh, erase, uh, remove the, the old uh, entry for that. Also, for the items, you can uh, you can use um, um, a database that will do the cycling of the items for you. So you won't have to delete the whole one and keep the list of uh, published items. You can have a lot of optimization at this time uh, from your plugin. We don't have such customized plugin because we wanted the implementation to be as generic as possible. So by now, if you just use the tree not tree plugin and the flat node plugin, you're able to cover more than 80% of the XEP, 60. So that's, uh, that's a lot of use cases possible. Uh, customize is more likely just about remove code. So it can be done quite, uh, quite quickly, but it's, it's always a very specific case. So we, we won't write 10 or 1,000 plugins with uh, very customized uh, items for specific <coughs> cases. The most simple uh, customization you can do is just to over override the option and feature uh, function. It's just a list of the standard pub sub feature. Reading at the ZPCT, you will see the, the feature of the node is what PubSub Engine will allow the user to perform. If you remove some feature, it will just avoid doing some calls. So um, this can cut down a lot of tests from the engine. The option also is just uh, what we've seen before. Uh, it's uh, how we configure the, uh, the node by default, number of items, uh, publish model, access model, etc. So if you just want to change the default configuration, you just change the option me uh, method. And uh, for everything else, you call not flat, and you're done. So it's uh, five minutes uh, uh, needed to, to, to write a plugin. Another possible uh, uh, improvement or customization is to change the way create not permission is working. If you have a, an LDAP, for example, you want to query it for a given flag, uh, it's very simple by querying your LDAP directory to hello or not the creation of the node. So uh, this is really easy to, uh, to integrate your engine, your pub sub engine in your infrastructure, and uh, you won't need to, to write some specific code to, uh, to add uh, some uh, ability or disability to do something on a pub sub. And of course, uh, you can uh, almost remove a lot of, uh, of tests on publish, uh, subscribe, and stuff like that. Important part uh, of feature body improvement uh, for PubSub is uh, clustering, of course. And uh, that's why uh, you need to uh, customize by writing your whole plugin when you want to scale. Our default plugin cover a lot of cases, but uh, it will not cover everything. So uh, by default, everything is replicated. So if you take Ijabody, you create a cluster, you create a node, the node is available on all nodes. Uh, usually they're just enough, but uh, you may want to spread over the node, to spread over the subscription or things like that if you want to really scale. Uh, so that all depends on the plugin. <coughs> So by default, our, our clustering model is just to spread the load 
of checking, uh, managing queries from the cluster. But uh, we don't take advantage of the clustering for the data. We keep locking the database on the right of the node. Uh, the the pubsub node is uh, the most important because we need transaction on that on that uh, table. Uh, pubsub state and pubsub items are completely asynchronous. Uh, that's not a big deal to have uh, a transaction here, but we still keep locking the table. And you see, if you have a lot of table, if you have also a lot of each body nodes, uh, that's a scalability issue. So that's why you need. Uh, also to change a bit the notary plugin and maybe rely on the virtual notary if you really want to scale. Mm. Or, use or use sharding for example. Yeah. So that's the first case I, I listed here. Uh, sharding is, is one of the possibility. Uh, for example, if, if you have few nodes but a lot of subscribers, you, you will spread the load by letting only uh, by letting each Jabody node handling the local subscribers. So when I connect to a given Jabody node, I'm subscribed on that node only. Uh, this will uh, prevent uh, the need of lock on the table, and also will also this will uh, make the more scalable. As the only thing that will need to be uh, multicasted on the cluster is a call to publish item. So when I call publish item, I'll call this method on all nodes in the cluster, but everything else uh, does not go out of a given Ijabody node. So that's a better scalability uh, pattern, in fact. But it works uh, if you don't have millions of nodes. <coughs> uh, of course, a good, good uh, optimization is to remove completely pub -sub subscription option. Uh, we had to add this case because uh, every subscription can be uh, configured, but uh, in fact, I know nobody using that. So that's again, some calls to the database, some checks we can remove uh, in production operation. Uh, the most typical case that need pub -sub subscription option is uh, the, uh, uh, the ability for the server to expire some subscription after a given amount of time. I'm subscribed for two days. That's where we use the subscription option. And of course, if, if you have a, a high publish rate, uh, you just remove a persistent item, you won't need to, uh, to store item and you can also remove uh, the possibility to, uh, to stand the last published item because uh, when you have a lot of user connecting at the same time that's what uh, I said at the beginning uh, you will have to process a lot of requests to resend the last published item and on a system with high publish rate, rate this is completely useless anyway so this is things you can remove <coughs> Uh, just about the last published item, it's a table uh, which is locally, so we don't replicate this information. It's an ETS table uh, internally. So uh, if you really need uh, to send the last published item when the user subscribe or when the user is going online on the system. Uh, just be careful on this table and uh, make sure you don't add it to the replication scheme in Nesia and stuff like that. 